like I was good at doing stuff in school, but I reached yeah. a certain point where I just lost interest in it. So throughout kind of life, that's I've, I've always kind of like had that in my mind, like don't be just doing one thing or have like one skill set. Make sure you can also lean on something else. Yeah. As like going through school and stuff, I was a little bit of a risk taker. So, and my mum didn't really like that in a way. Like mm. obviously I'll I, I get myself into small bits of trouble and I'll learn from it and, and, and like never get myself in trouble again type of thing. Mm. I was like, I can do this myself, you know? I'm like, I'm helping all these brands. Everything was going wrong that could go wrong. <laughs> <When> we, <laughs> what was going wrong? When we first launched. Ah, <laughs> oh, there was the most amount of stuff like, <laughs> You're not defined by where you, where you come from, yeah. and I think that's a big message that I always yeah. want to tell people. Like, like you have to be able to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Like, be comfortable with being uncomfortable. When you grow up in ends, you don't realize it when you're confident, but you have an audacity to do things that ordinarily most people wouldn't be able to do. Yeah. Welcome back to the Takeoff Experience. We have special guests in the building, Nathaniel and Albert. How are you both doing today? All good. All good, man. Good to be here. Yeah. Thanks for having us, man. Yeah, man. No, you're very, very welcome. I've been looking forward to this conversation because I think what you guys are doing is, is really powerful. But before we get into what that is, let's go with your backgrounds. Who, actually, I'll start with you, Nathaniel. Who's Nathaniel? It's a, it's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever thinks that, right? Like, it's it's most multifaceted, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm a father, uh, entrepreneur, um, engineer, property investor. Like, engineer as well. Yeah. Wow. So I've my, my background is 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 quite crazy. I'm to just run through that quick. Go for it. Um, so born and raised in South London, mm -hmm. uh, Jamaican heritage. Started off with my kind of like my entrepreneurial journey quite young. Was working newspaper rounds from like age 13, and so I'm um, getting other people involved and like divvying out the money to uh well then i went to went through school college you know well i didn't go to university i uh, did an apprenticeship okay um in engineering and then i went to university and then during that time i also started investing in property started my own property management company during uni no so oh, well it actually yeah they did they did coincide at the same oh, wow. time i didn't start it during uni but yeah. i was working on both at the same time okay. wow, um and then i worked on that a bit with albert as well so that's where we first kind of started uh working together on a, on a business level but we also went to primary school together so ah, okay so you know like, we've, I mean, yeah oh, wow, that's exactly yeah. exactly <laughs> um yeah and that's that's me and then uh, obviously i had two girls mm. two two kids and yeah just enjoying life great thank you thank you albert what about you so me, I'm Albert, born and raised in South London, father of one, I'm a girl dad. Um, my background is digital marketing. So I've been doing that for like coming up to 11 years now. Okay. So wow. um, basically I wanted to play football or that side of things. So getting into business wasn't a thing when I was like young, but I always had the admiration for like people like Richard Bradson and mm. all of that, you know, so so there was always a, a slight little inkling of our oh, business is cool. It would be nice to do this. And then see my, my parents and all of that do some ventures, which I'm pretty sure we'll speak about later. Just made me think I could probably end up doing something, mm. you know? I need just a home in on some sort of skills, right? And then I just love marketing. I just loved advertising, um, how it looked on TV and the psychology of, um, of, 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 of advertising. So that kind of lured me into being able to do something around marketing. So, um, Yes, yeah, so I've, I've, I've built a business in Australia, um, like a deal oh, website in Australia. I've done some property investing as well. Obviously, done property with Nathaniel as well. Mm. So, um, so yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty much me. I've been busy over the over the years wow. since I've left university. So, yeah, that's crazy. So, did you, so you guys said that you met at primary school, right? Yes. Right. Did you guys go to the same secondary school? Yeah. Yes. So we went to the, wow. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so okay. Was same primary, same yeah. secondary. Um, okay. And then we didn't go to college together, yeah. but then we like okay. stayed in contact. At secondary school, were you both quite academic? At school, would you say? Or I'll say you're more academic than me. Yeah. Sure. So <laughs> I don't know. It's, I don't know. It's it's, it's it's an interesting one, right? Because when like I, like I was good at doing stuff in school, but I reached yeah. a certain point where I just lost interest in it. Okay. Um, Why? Just I think the, the 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 kind of school system and and how it kind of all works and it's all really structured and mm. you just weren't really interesting. So 
though I was good at learning, I was good at learning things that I wanted to learn. Right. Okay. So cool. because the the um, curriculum wasn't things that I was particularly interested in, um, I just like yeah, just kind of checked out at a certain point. So I actually did okay in terms of like like GCSE results and stuff, mm. but yeah, it just weren't weren't really interested after a certain point. I think it was when when I hit around year nine and then you know you're kind of yeah. GCSE. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like <laughs> yeah. Check that was out. it yeah. yeah i was like done. i was i was done okay. yeah <laughs> i just did what i need to do to keep my mom happy yeah. and scrape through yeah. you know what i mean fair enough fair enough what about you albert yeah. were you like were you feeling the same no you're not pretty much the same you know i mean i found it easy to learn things but mm. i think i was easily distracted okay like i could easily be distracted but I, my interest was in like sport football all of that you know so academic side like doing maths all of that i was i can i can learn i can pick it up easy yeah. but I just didn't push myself hard enough, mm. you know what I mean? So, but I got all I needed to mm. to get to go to college and to study. But good thing about Nathaniel says the, the curriculum sometimes doesn't work in your favor. And I think that kind yeah. of what happened to me. So the school we went to was really weird. They didn't allow you. So the top two classes, so so they had, we had like five sets and there was top two sets and then the three bottom sets. And um, the top two sets weren't allowed to study business studies. What? Which is weird. I don't understand why. Seriously? Yeah. So you had to pick up a language instead. So we had to do French. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And if you speak another language, you <laughs> can can do that. That's and um, kind of yeah. Wild. So it was weird because I, I, I that was that that moment of time where I was like, business studies sounds interesting. Yeah. Business studies is probably cool. Learn how to be an entrepreneur. Learn how to be someone like Richard Branson. That's all I knew at the time. And then um, so I wasn't allowed to do that. So I was like, okay, I've got to do French. I'll, I'll give my best shot at doing French, but. Obviously, I couldn't do that. And then... How did French go? I felt, I felt French. <laughs> <laughs> There's no passion for it, right? French. It was French. Just look, look. No passion. There was that no passion. Wild. I definitely felt French. I got a D in it. I got a yeah. D. So I was just below the pass mark, which was a C. Had I got a C, it would have felt like an A, I swear to you. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, like, going to college now, yeah. I was allowed to pick up business studies. Okay. So that's where it was like, yes, I can actually do what I want to do. I can do business studies mm. and do sports studies. Okay. And those are my things. That like sports was my thing and picking up business studies, something I was actually interested in. Mm. I had like a extra, although it was getting EMA then, so obviously I had to go to get my 30 pound a week. Yeah. But I had the extra inkling to go and and and, and learn, you know? So yeah. yeah. So studying weren't too bad. I, I, I enjoyed it a bit, but you know, as yeah. long as it's stuff that I enjoy, then they I'll flourish. Do it, yeah. yeah, that's a bit interesting. I think that's probably why that the like you know entrepreneur and business culture is not so. It, I think it's bigger now, but probably oh, yeah. back then it wasn't that, that big in the UK because they clearly wasn't encouraging it. Yeah, like the top two sets. How can you not be allowed to study business? Yeah. I think that, I think there wow. is that there is that whole kind of like mentality or narrative around. Mm to be academic means to be successful. I think it has it has changed a, a bit now yeah, to be fair, but there's that old like you need to do this or follow this mm, kind of path to yeah to be deemed successful. Do you know exactly, what I mean? Exactly, yeah. And definitely a, a lot when we was going to school. Oh yeah, yeah, 100%, yeah. That's crazy, wow, wow, wow. So where, I guess in terms of the business, the interest in business, where did that come from? Was it like from the household? Was it from just personally, you know, somebody that you looked up to? So for me, it was definitely my mom. Okay. Um, so even when I was, when I say like when I kind of started a newspaper round when I, when I was young, that was that was very much through her. And it was like she like one thing that she always kind of instilled in 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 all like me and my brother and sisters. Sister, I have, I have no. This just one sister. <laughs> <laughs> um, was that always make sure you have like another stream of income or have another way to make money don't Smart. be solely Better reliant on that. one yeah so so throughout kind of life that's I've, I've always kind of like had that in my mind like don't be just doing one thing or have like one skill set make sure you can also lean on something else yeah. in case whatever changes with with one income you you have another option do you know what yeah. i mean so yeah that's that's definitely how i kind of started so between between that and and even invested in property as well mm. like having that as a stream of income that she was like okay because she because that's what that's what she had done and that was her kind okay. of journey so i just literally just lent on that wow 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 and you went into property investing you still doing that now yeah so okay i, I 
not not, not like I was in before. Wakuda is far, far, <laughs> far <laughs> too time consuming to yeah. be like, a- actively um, in in a property world. But so I started investing in property when I was when did I because. Did I say I was 20? I think I was 20. You were at 20. Yeah. yeah. I'll say you were at 20, yeah. Oh, yeah. Years, yeah, no. So, yeah, it was... It's not one of the first out of, out of, out of friendship groups. Yeah. yeah. That's very... Um, yeah. And it was actually, at that point, I didn't really have... It, it wasn't really, oh, okay, I'm going to do this to make money. It was like, literally, my mom was like, oh, do you know what? You should, you should, you should do this. And I was like, okay, cool. And then I got my first property and then it was like... Okay, this it was like I think it was like a, 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 I didn't really do anything with it, like aside from renting. It was like, okay, it's it's turned over a bit of money, like it it kind it, it took a little while to come to me, but I was like, okay, this makes sense now. Like maybe <laughs> yeah. I should do this again, and then so I did it again, and then kind of then I, then I uh, use a different approach uh, rent to rent. I think you actually had a yeah we had yeah we you had, had you a had a podcast yeah, we right had a yeah few people yeah we had um property strat talk about that. Who else was talking about it? Kazi was talking about mm. it, yeah. And uh, Tage, yeah, Tage talks, yeah. Yeah, so I, so I did Rent to Rent. That went really, really well um, as a strategy. I think the most I was managing was like 25 properties at one. Yeah, it was, yeah, that was an intense time as well. Um, but then I wasn't really like passionate about it. Like it, it, it was what it was kind of thing. And it is quite time, quite time intensive unless you've kind of built in certain systems in yeah. place and stuff. So then I, I, I kind of just let that go, sold off the, the existing ones that I had and just mm. moved. Sold it to somebody else. Yeah, the kind of contracts mm. that I had. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that was that was kind of my wow experience in business. But in terms of like influence, definitely first and foremost, my mom. Okay, wow, that's incredible. And you know what's what's crazy that you said, right? the money aspect i think a lot of people are really consumed about money mm-hmm. and when you get the money you then start looking at do i actually like this I yeah the money but and and do, do, do you know what the, do you know what the thing is as well like is it's like what what you're exchanging for the money and mm-hmm. for me do, doing doing rent to rent it was like it, it, beca- it became another job and i remember like i, I was feeling before when i like when i when i when i first started it it was like like this was really excited I, the idea of like acquiring new properties, properties, refurbishing them and stuff like that. And that whole process I enjoyed. But then after a while, it was like, uh, like that the thought of doing it, it mm. was it, like, it wasn't exciting to me. And, it, um, it and then I was like, this, this, yeah, I was like, yeah. like it's after a certain point, this doesn't make sense. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm now just doing it as a job. Like yeah. I, I, I can already do that elsewhere. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it was at that point I was like, no. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. What about you, Albert? So it again, so the inspiration came from my mum, but it was it was it was a, it was, a, it was a different way though, because um, I think it was just more through me just learning and picking things up. So um, my background's got I'm Ghanaian. Mm. Uh, my parents from Ghana, um, so they just want to come here, play it safe, work. Yeah, you know what I mean. And they kind of installed that into me. So go through the education system, find your job, basically work there for the rest of your life. Basically, you know what I mean. But as like going through school and stuff, I was a little bit of a risk taker. So, and my mom didn't really like that in a way. Like, mm. obviously, I, I, I'll get myself into small bits of trouble and I'll learn from it and, and, and like never get myself in trouble again type of thing. Mm. So I, I, I was quick at learning that type of stuff. But my mom, she just installed, like, as soon as I got a job after uni, it was, it was a case of work and just, just carrying work in. Just, okay. just work. And then I used to get, I used to speak with my uncles and my mom's brother a lot based in the states and he was like get into like being a doctor or a nurse or something like that can you imagine me being a doctor or a nurse? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like get into that and i was like no nah. i was just like it's not me like it's, yeah. it's not me you know so but then whilst my mom was saying this all, all this stuff here she was out building in ghana she was, was building she? houses and all of that stuff in ghana so she, she'll build a house for a family but then she was all like building like little hostels and stuff like that so it was more of a trip in 2012 when i went to ghana and I saw what my mum was building out there. And I was like, this is mad. Mm. I was like, my mum's actually doing all this shit. She's not really so, like telling me as much here, but she's doing all of this. <clears throat> and she's expecting me to, to work nine to five for the rest of my life. I was like, no, this can't, this can't be, you know what I mean? There's like, there's more to this. There's, I, yeah. I want to be able to do stuff for people out here in Ghana as well. Like, I want to be able to, to get to that point. How do I get to that point? Do I just work nine to five at one place? No, but my mum was working 
like three jobs at one time. You know what I'm saying? Really? Three jobs at wow. one time. So she was obviously putting in the work and giving back on a nice on a nice level, you know. So um, yeah. I was like, how can I do this with maybe one job and give back? Probably it's not gonna work out. So I need something to kind of get me going in a way. So that kind of spurred me. It's like, nah, I got to do something with what I'm learning mm. and turn that into a business. I was working then, so I was earning decent money. So I was like, how do I put this money into something to? To kind of do something more, you know. So I was working in um, a digital advertising company, and I was picking up all this marketing, digital marketing, and it was it was it was a, it was it was before all the influencers and all of that. It was it was literally just all taken off. Like online advertising was taken off, and a lot of big brands are pumping a lot more money into advertising, seeing the benefits. Like the internet was developing a lot more because um, before that. It was all very spammy and it was getting a bit more cleaner. Yeah. So I I dived into it then and I was dived, I was in the industry full of like so much people. I was kind of like one of the young, I was like the young black person there. I was like, everyone knew me because I was black basically. Mm. Um, so it was quite a white, whitewashed industry. And then um, I was like, I can do this myself, you know. I'm like, I'm helping all these brands. I, I can do this myself. Mm. And I told my mum and she was like, go for it. Okay. She's like, do it. Interesting. She was like, do it. She was she was prepared for me to take the risk. Mm. You know what I mean? She was happy to take it, but she was like, make sure you still you're still working or whatever, and and do it. So I think, although my mum wanted me to go on a on a straight, safe and narrow path, yeah, yeah, I think she believed in me enough and saw saw me like go through certain challenges and stuff like that through life, and probably just believed that I can probably do something you know yeah, so yeah. all the other stuff i've done like getting into property she encouraged me to get into property yeah. and all of that um she's encouraged me to do it and then obviously doing bakuda with nathaniel mm. like she she's loving it because it's something that that appeals to her and, and it's to her, it relates to her you know with yeah. what we with what we have so so yeah the inspiration came from my mum and yeah just this she i mean she's just been the main focal point behind it all so yeah mad wow incredible both both stories so i'm wondering wakuda at what point did that come in and whose idea was it <laughs> <laughs> so it, 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 it definitely did so it didn't it didn't start with me it started with albert so albert can yeah. start and then I'll, okay I'll, so I'll, okay start with albert i'll okay. jump in cool. yeah so um it definitely started from me so again working in digital marketing doing mm. advertising for loads of different brands so i was working in the, like working for a company but then as an agency you just help so much different brands right so you're yeah. going to get different brands on board you want to help them with their marketing so the main thing was um affiliate marketing so we was helping them get new like if, if they depend on what type of campaign they want to do yeah. whether it's like lead generation they want to build their database of, of consumers that are or of their target consumers basically or um they want to try and get sales or whatever. So it would just be many different brands. It could be like Deliveroo, Sky. I remember when Now TV came out, that was crazy. Um, it was helping them with their a customer acquisition. And um, I, through that, as I said, I was like, I can kind of do this myself. But then there's like, I was going to all these events and meeting these clients and I was not seeing anyone like me. I was not okay. seeing anyone like me. Yeah. But then also it ticked to myself as well. All these brands I'm working for, None of them are black owned. Yeah. You know what I mean? None true. of them are black yeah. owned as well. So to myself, I was just like, how can I do what I'm doing for these guys? Or okay, they've got the budget and all of that, but how can I do this? But like for black owned businesses. Because mm. also on a high street, you don't see black businesses. You go into shops, you don't that see like very, small yeah. black businesses. So it's very hard to actually get what you want on a high street from a black business, you know? So like myself. Just even going to say a card shop, mm. like Father's Day, can't get a, a card with a black dad on it or anything like that, you know. So my thinking is, how does my daughter get me a card eventually with a black dad or whatever that mm. resonates to me? She can't do that, you know what I mean? Yeah. So she can't just go to a card factory or Clinton's and, and, and do that. So that's where I was just like, a lot of things was just ticking. A lot of things were just ticking. I was just like, I need to kind of help my community in a way with what i've learned i've done this for almost 10 years now at that point how do i help my community how can i really yeah i can give back whatever but it's like 
how do I create something long lasting? Mm. And then um, all the like, I think COVID happened and where I was working, I had moved to a new company. So unfortunately, like it was very easy to let me go because I had just moved there. Mm. So it was like, I had six months on my probation, I just done and I got made redundant. After the probation? Yeah, after my probation was done, I got made redundant. It was very easy to let me go, yeah. like COVID. And it was really weird because I, where I was working, yeah, was, um, it was a online doctor health company, right? Okay. So things should have been booming for them. Mm. And it was booming for them. So I was like, listen, you're making a lot more money now. You can probably em employ a lot more people to scale further because this is a serious situation. It's COVID, you want to get behind it? Let's go, let's all rally up and go, you know? And they're like, no, we've got to let people go. So it just didn't make sense to me. And I was like, you know what? And then again, there, there was like 200 people there. And I was like, one of the only three black people there. Mm. And we were all up for being made redundant. Okay. So that just hit me as well. And I was like, nah, I really got to use what I know and help my community and yeah. help my people and, 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 and do things my way. And then, um, obviously speak with Nathaniel, um, mm. I jumped on the call with him. It was like, how do we, how do we put something together? We've yeah. been doing business together. And so how do we do something and, and, and really, but it, it was more, it wasn't just, uh, like just call him up or whatever. Like we've been mm -hmm. doing business. We know that we're passionate about whatever business we're doing, you know? Yeah. So it, it wasn't just to rally up some guys and just do whatever. It was like, it was a proper call in case of like more. So I know if we were to do something, mm -hmm. we will put our, we'll put full 100 into it. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So we just jumped on the call and then kind of had a conversation and kind of, Took it from there, so you probably want to jump in now. Yeah, no, I think we've, we've kind of covered. It covered it, <laughs> to be honest, it took, took all the shine. Yeah. <laughs> and th that was it, and then and then we 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 quickly launched the idea. Yeah. Um, oh, just before you go, mm -hmm. Wakuda. You want to describe oh, what, what it is? is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was going to describe what you. I was like, you know what? It's best to come from the creators <laughs> to describe their platform, not the host, right? Yeah. yeah. No, no, that's <laughs> good. Um. So Wakuda is an online marketplace to shop unique gifts um, and lifestyle products mm. from African and Caribbean brands. Yeah. Uh, so we partner with exceptional brands to showcase, to curate and showcase their products through our marketplace, yeah. connecting them with customers online, obviously leaning on um, Albert's kind of expertise in digital marketing. Also one part that you missed out was like, of um, done a lot of online sales like as being a marketplace seller myself so we've got like a lot of mm. complementary experience in the space yeah and we use that to work with these brands to help them to reach a wider audience using a variety of different channels okay so products range from gifts to greeting cards like mm. i would mention to jewelry and fashion very much everything aesthetically cultural yeah wow what was the first product Oh, the first product. You remember it? Wow. <laughs> it was probably some skincare things. Like, okay. Some vendors have like different forms of shea butter or body butters and yeah. stuff. And I'm pretty sure that was probably one of the first, either that or like a bonnet or something like that. Okay. Like a hair bonnet. It was definitely one of those two. And <laughs> one of those two was probably the first sell. Yeah. <laughs> and how, how did you approach that? I guess that creator. Did they approach you or um, was it? So, so it was, it was, it was, so this it was during COVID. So in the middle of all the mad lockdowns that were going on and a lot of the, the business owners and creators and stuff on our platform sell at a lot of like local markets, pop-ups and stuff right, like that. Okay. So during lockdown, obviously all of that was done. So they had a lot of like, had, hadn't really paid much attention to mm. trying to enhance their visibility online. Yeah. So it was really an opportunity for us to kind of reach out to business owners who we thought would work on the platform and be like, okay, let, let's try and work on um, using Wakuda to create an online space for you mm -hmm. um, and then helping to that enhance your visibility and uh, connect you to a, a wider audience. So it was it was us reaching out, um, mm -hmm. whether it's through socials, emails, mm -hmm. and then later on when, when pop-ups and stuff started opening back up, visiting them and... and uh, like I was mentioning to you earlier, like seeing w where where we saw that there was demand reaching out to to suppliers or vendors that 
uh, were able to kind of fulfill that or yeah. creating products in that space. Yeah. 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 How did you find that, that process of doing that? Do you feel like you were learning as you were going? Or did you kind of have like, um, I guess your, I don't want to make it so complicated, but you know, in the consulting world, they always say this stuff, value proposition, but were you like the benefits to them? Do you already had that sort of like sort it out? Or no. Were you kind of figuring it out? Yeah, no, we, we were, we were, we were yeah. constantly like iterating around the idea yeah. because, and, and, and this is something that, that that's always mm. kind of, that's still ongoing because yeah. we have, when we first started, obviously we had no supplies on the platform at all. Then we went to to having supplies and speaking to them about what worked for them, what didn't work for them on the mm-hmm. platform, what benefits they may like to see. And it was kind of like once once we did that and kind of like iterated around the idea, then it was just okay. Things that we thought that would be of huge value to people, people actually didn't really care about so much. And like what? there were other things. What's a good example of that? I, I guess maybe something like there's been um like, some stuff that we've put in like say yeah. like loyalty and, okay. and stuff like that I guess yeah I, 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 I was more more say like like on the vendor on the side yeah on, on, yeah. on the vendor side like mm. certain like developments or things that we thought would be convenient mm. for people People actually was like, oh, this is actually not a big deal. <laughs> it's, it's not really <laughs> a big deal. Crazy what you big, think is yeah, a big deal. Yeah, and you, like, oh, but that's okay. why it's massively important to, yeah. to speak to and continuously have like a feedback loop with, mm. with customers or users because you could be going way in the wrong direction yeah. if, you're, if you're not kind of listening. Yeah. Wow. Do you know how many products roughly you have now? I had a look at the website as well. Yeah. It looks like quite extensive amount. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's going to be hitting around 3,000. Three, yeah. Yeah. 3,000. Yeah. Three years. Yeah. So a, a, That's a lot. Yeah. A lot of products. And to be honest, we've, in the past, I think, well, in the past like three months or so, we've had like a 700% increase in product listings on the platform. Crazy. Yeah. So like it's very much, mm. but we've, th- this is through us effectively, like you said, because you mentioned three mm. years, like there was a soft launch where we were still working a lot of stuff out Mm -hmm. to where we are now, where we've got a lot more of a firmer grasp. And and that's why we're seeing that kind of crazy increase in not only listings, but obviously also on the demand side as well. That's crazy. Are you vetting? Are you vetting this as they're coming Uh through? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, no. (laughs) Well, that's busy. You guys must be busy. No, but we we have to because it is. Yeah, you have to. It's it's curated. It's it's not like anyone can just kind of come and list something first of all like ebay yeah yeah take a picture and then exactly and because wow we need to we need to know that or at least kind of have some kind of thoughts about whether the product range or 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 products of the new um vendor yeah will actually work on the platform as well so there's like an application that people have to go through and then and then we we kind of see that they're they're actually able to supply and actually do a good job of that as well Mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, when people are buying from or buying from a vendor on Wakuda, mm. they're buying from Wakuda. So like yeah. it yeah. reflects on us. So okay. we need to make sure that people can actually um can actually supply and do do a good job of that. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it's it's not how, how are you finding that? Because obviously the scale you guys are wanna are gonna scale, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wanna scale. How how are you finding that? Because it must be a lot of work. Of course I understand that it probably can't be automated because again, you don't want to be, you don't want to get to a stage where it's like, I don't know, like on eBay where there's loads of fake mm-hmm. items yeah. or Amazon, even, even Amazon, I think struggles with this to be fair. Like say like, um, the first, uh, um, Apple's selling their iPhone by Amazon and then that runs out. You get all these fake sellers mm-hmm. trying to sell through there and Amazon kind of doesn't really stop it really. Obviously maybe later on they'll, catch yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah 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 so i guess you obviously get rid of that by mm-hmm. doing it yeah by yeah and, and and that's sort of i think is is a a, a a quite a big differentiator from from us to yeah. um like those kind of massive incumbent marketplaces is that we're very curated mm. obviously what we've curated our, our suppliers so our, yeah. like our supply chain is like really unique and then also our actual product range as mm. well and it's obviously maintaining that, maintaining the the authenticity and the quality of that as well. Yeah, that's yeah. 
like really important to us. And there are some there there are some elements that are automated and that that we can further automate moving forward. Mm. But I think where we're at now, it makes so much sense to not do that because we need to be really kind of engaged in yeah. the process. Um, yeah. So that's what's really important for us right now. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And I guess I've got this question for you. I don't know if you've hired a team yet, but I'm imagining at mm. some point in the future, you're going to hire a team and then they're going to then do the vetting for you, yeah. right? Have <laughs> you thought about that yet? Are you worried about that? You know what? I, I wouldn't say worried, but yeah. um, hiring... I always say it's, it's one of the hardest things mm, yeah. um, for like owners, you know, so, but I think we're taking it in a good step. Like we're, like we've got a couple of freelancers working in the background okay. and, and, and doing certain things, but um, I think it's the right hire. I don't, I, it's, it's about getting the right hire that's going to move the needle further or, or whatever it is. So if the supply side, if the demand is so much like more than what it is now, then maybe we do need someone to kind of, check on them, vet them, make sure they're cool, then let them go into the platform to to upload and and, and get things on the platform. But yeah. I think for now, we prefer to do it because we can engage with them. We get to learn about them. They get to learn yeah. about us. It's, it's that, like, it's, it's, it's like we're humanizing it. Although we're online platform, yeah. like we're humanizing it. They get to, like they get to speak, speak of us. We've got them in like a, a community where we can all share ideas and help them, you know, so, um, humanizing that element because being online could be quite isolating and, and yeah. a lot of them do feel isolated when they try to do things themselves mm. a lot of them ask for for our expertise our help on certain things their um, advice on certain things as well so them knowing that them knowing that they can come to us um and ask for advice and um probably help or try and create a, um, a specific marketing campaign with us it just humanizes the whole process i think it makes being the business owner on their side a bit more enjoyable that they have that help and not like a, a lonely process, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. 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 And talking about that, actually, I looked at one, um, your packages online and that's where I, f I feel like you really differentiate yourself to like an Etsy or anything else. Like you said, the human side, right? Mm. I guess, why did you guys decide to go down that route of not just, okay, we're just going to list your products, but we're going to also help you with PR. We're also going to help you with marketing and things like that. We're going to also help you grow your business mm -hmm. yeah yeah um <laughs> so i i think one of the the things that we realized really early on was like all of like these kind of business owners creators artists um designers whatever were were really good at at, at doing that at mm. the, the product side of it but when it came to marketing and actually reaching their target audience, that was where a lot of it was mm. kind of, was was difficult because that's not really where their kind of expertise lied. So we we realized that like, like it's, it's really simple to say, oh, okay, to come and list on, on this kind of marketplace and stuff. But, and, and it, is, it is more difficult, a bit more time consuming, but there's a lot more value to be added in the, yeah. in the additional kind of marketing efforts and, being able to kind of take that approach of okay we're going to work with yeah with with this creator to create like a targeted campaign that we're going to run on x date or whatever yeah and then th there was one that that we ran was it last last month or so mm -hmm. yeah. and it, it 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 led to i think it was like a, a hundred what was it, like 120 sales in a day for wow for one of the sellers on the platform um and that was the most that she had ever had. Like she was yeah, kind of cra crazy, sales, crazy, though. crazy yeah. overwhelmed because she, she had to she had to make a lot. She's a, a, yeah. a candle maker. She had to create a lot of candles. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah, wow. but but it was like it, it just shows the power of like it, it could have been just a case of okay, you come and sit on the platform and then what sells sells or like we we push whatever, but we actually kind of work together to create that campaign, which yeah. obviously worked really well. Wow. That's incredible. Okay, so let's talk about deliveries, right? So, Wakuda doesn't handle the deliveries, is that? No, correct? no. Okay, yeah, so we don't. So okay, all cool. all kind of logistics and fulfillment yeah. is managed by the, by the them. Okay. yeah mm -hmm. members. And in terms of customer issues, do they also handle it as well, or, or could it be like the middle? It de person? Depends. It depends because yeah. because we're we're very much all about managing customer experience yeah. and expectations. Generally 
the the sellers are like the first port of call for a customer if there's any issue mm. but sometimes customers do reach out to us directly in which case it's not a case of redirecting to to the seller like, yeah. we, we will help to manage yeah. that process yeah um because it's really important that especially if it's like a customer's first experience with us we need to make sure that that is the best experience because that's what they're going to remember yeah yeah is there an app sorry I don't, I don't, no we haven't no, got that no, so no, 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 is that is that, is that is that in in the works or do you um, think it's like it's not important no I, I don't i don't i don't to be honest yeah. um and it's interesting because we it was one, one of the other things that we mm-hmm. we thought oh okay like, like this would be a good idea to yeah. have at one point right but mm. then it was just like no like what what the kind of data is telling us what customers are telling us and stuff mm. it's it's not it's not that. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So let's yeah. let's focus on what we need to focus on, which is driving yeah. the customers and, yeah. and, and seller demand, and then look at that kind of stuff later. Yeah. It, it's, it's key. Like I, th- I thought it's always key to just focus on what needs, like the function of the business, rather than yeah. create an app because then you create an app just to look good. Yes. You know what I mean, but then yes. Yes. now yes. you've got yes. the yes. struggle of like, okay, how do you get traffic to your website and how do you get traffic to your app? Yeah, and if you ain't got much traffic to your website, how are you gonna transfer like those customers or what you have to your app? Mm. Now you can, so now you got two elements of, of of different platforms. Yeah, that you've got to put extra work into now. You know what I'm saying? So where we're putting the work into one platform and driving that traffic, we can build that database eventually. Maybe years down the line, mm. it might make sense, and then it's gonna be so easy to transfer those customers to the app, and the app will just run seamlessly. Yeah, you know what I mean. Whereas if we had built it now i would be going crazy mm. yeah we'll be going crazy there's so be, much stuff to do on the website and there'll be stuff yeah. to do on the app or something goes down on the app yeah, or something goes down it's, true. it's mad it's you true. know what i mean that like focus on one thing mm. like and validate it's like, it. there's a, like like, like you it. say there's a there's a the technical side of it mm. um and and that kind of management but then there's also just the the acquisition of like like customers yeah. and, and suppliers or something. Yeah. yeah um so it's like yeah let's not let's let's just focus on what we need to focus on right now and then when the time is right then we then we can kind of yeah. look yeah. at additional stuff that's going to enhance the user experience yeah mm-hmm. you know another thing that i like that you guys did so i'm in the i'm in the technology world and i i think for a lot of um businesses when they start they always like to go really big bang and spend a lot of money on things that they don't need and mm-hmm. build things from scratch when there's lots of frameworks out there or packages out there that you can already use that can get you so further ahead so Mm -hmm. so i read so i think think it was on forbes actually i read that you uh you didn't build it from scratch Mm -hmm. you used um a platform Mm -hmm. to start your e-commerce business i guess why did you guys decide to do that instead of like having you know going down the route of let me create my own yeah website from scratch two two reasons Mm. probably more than two (laughs) but like (laughs) two primary reasons (laughs) that are coming to mind one is the cost involved mm-hmm. um we're not developers in terms of like like yeah. technical developers so it would be outsourcing that doing that without having a certain amount of validation didn't make mm-hmm. sense also speed as well mm-hmm. so if we can get an off-the-shelf platform and kick something off in i think it was about a month before mm-hmm. we had our basic product ready to go mm-hmm. then do that and then we learn a hell of a lot oh, like, yeah. and hella fast as well because yeah. it was yeah so ev- everything was going wrong that could go wrong <laughs> <When> we, <laughs> what was going wrong when we first launched ah <laughs> oh, there was the most amount of stuff like <laughs> payments weren't going through properly yeah. like people were trying to like people were trying to purchase stuff and it was just all breaking down yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> and then you so it, it, it wasn't it, like it, it, it wasn't it wasn't that bad yeah but it was there, there was a lot of kind of like technical issues i guess yeah. and like user experience issues okay but that that was all about what that kind of loft uh soft launch phase was about right yeah, it's about yeah. like learning and then fixing all of that stuff as soon as we could so that we can then kind of do it more properly okay and did you guys use this platform it was i think it was called woocommerce did you mm. build the wakuda by yourself using that platform or did you hire somebody yeah. to so, do so 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 woocommerce is a um a WordPress plugin and then okay. there's a, another element that we use for or another plugin that we use mm. for um the, the kind of multi-vendor mm. uh, type functionality yeah so that was all like off the shelf quite okay. quite wow. simple and then there were additional things that we needed 
um, to 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 customize it to make it work how we wanted and to mm. and based on like what what our sellers were kind of saying to us that they, okay. they they kind of wanted and stuff and and then we use the developers to kind of do okay. do that those kind of additional things wow wow i'm loving yeah. the process of all of this you know <laughs> yeah, it's crazy it's good yeah. it's good like like i said like like it was about it was about speed for us we, we yeah. needed to quickly work out whether this made sense mm. you know i mean and and that's exactly what we did yeah and it, it kept on pivot not really pivoting but just kept on learning yeah and yeah buying the learning that's 100%. it right? yeah like whatever kind of go wrong or whatever we'll learn and find a way to kind of make yeah. sure that doesn't happen again you know yeah. so yeah it's just learning through the process and then and, and make sure you make those changes quickly so it yeah. doesn't happen again yeah. yeah so in terms of i guess the money making mechanism of wakuda is through fees right fees of the items being sold mm -hmm. on on the marketplace plus the packages I guess, are there any other um, plans or are there other, like, you know how we were talking offline about Amazon and mm -hmm. obviously going to like AWS and Kindle. I guess, are there similar things that you're thinking of with Wakudo? You're just focusing on just your your um, your creators, yeah. scaling them up and then, and then obviously your customers as well. Yeah, so like, like you said, like we're, we're, we're driven through like our revenue is driven through through fees uh, predominantly. Yeah. It was it was it was important for us to to do that because we didn't want to be taking taking fees and money from sellers mm. without being able to demonstrate that we can add value to them. Right, I so, like that though. If, yeah, so yeah. so so by so by kind of starting off like this, it's I mean it it, it was risk free for them, mm. and then it was as we moved on that we realized that there was an additional um benefits that we, that we could add around support around pr and, and and more kind of enhanced marketing mm -hmm. um which we would charge for but we've also been able to demonstrate that we add a lot of value there mm -hmm. in terms of like future revenues there's there's a lot of opportunity um mm -hmm. there's a lot of, a lot of different kind of roads that we can kind of go down right now we're just purely focused on what we need to do around around sellers and buyers and, okay. and acquiring them and, and growing that as quickly as we can mm -hmm. and then looking at future opportunities okay i also saw on forbes 45 percent growth yeah yeah what, what, what's behind that god <laughs> mr market <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy that's incredible so congratulations yeah, on that. yeah. yeah thank wow you. yeah oh god you now to say just more just like I think our key thing is is is, is making sure that we're, we're driving customers. And then if you've got this platform, there's building supply and then trying to drive customers. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, the key thing was just doing what I know to kind of get traffic in and get customers in. Um, so my background is affiliate marketing, right? So we're just trying to connect with people that I've worked with previously. Like, hey, we've got, I've got this, we've got this website now. Mm -hmm. You can drive um, traffic to products or whatever if it, if it suits your customer database. Yeah. So it was just a case of just connecting and using my network and, and, and utilizing um, platforms such as um, Facebook and, and, mm. and, 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 and Google at times, not putting too much into them, but just more, more um, like targeted campaigns where we know we can probably get the right results um, from it. Yeah. So like we're heavy on the marketing, we're heavy on the digital market. Like, like okay. that's our main thing. Like yeah. the digital marketing is our key thing and being able to build bespoke campaigns. I think that's what sets us up from from others um like there's the marketing element and and it's, it's something that i've always thought that i don't see many black businesses marketing mm. to a certain level or out there doing creative um marketing you know yeah. so i want to see that on a bigger scale eventually mm. i want to see there being like a nice sick advert on tv although tv's tv but it's just something creative around black businesses or, yeah. or black or a black brand um, in a nice creative way and, and, and something memorable, you know, like you see all these other adverts or like massive billboards that, that yeah, like, like even big billboards where it's um, companies, this and other companies. And it's just like, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like I want to see, I want to see all that creation yeah. with black businesses. So yeah, that's why I'm, I'm heavy on the marketing, but I feel eventually we'll be able to get there where black businesses can be as creative, as loud within marketing and advertising. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Marketing's key at the end it's, of the day, right? I'll tell you, you know what? I'll tell you where I'm at with marketing from my perspective. 
I thought, do you know, I think what, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, because you, you've, you've spoken to a lot more businesses than I have. You speak to them on a day-to-day basis. I think there's some aspect of the belief of, oh, organic, let people just share it. You just kind of, <laughs> there's that. And it's probably a flawed belief, but I think a lot of people, because they, because that's what they've heard maybe other people, yeah. success has been, has been yeah. organic. Maybe it probably hasn't. It's probably been through marketing. Um, but I've, I've changed my mind on that. I've, I now start to, I've now started to do marketing. I think it's, I think it's vital. But what, what, what has, I guess, what's been the feedback from businesses in terms of marketing? How do they feel about it? Why, why, I guess, why don't they really do it? So, I mean, it'd be good to get your perspective on it as well, right? Yeah. But like from, from sellers that I've spoken to, a lot is like budget budget is a factor right mm-hmm. so and it's uh, it's understanding the the return on on the investment yeah. of of whatever kind of marketing channel or strategy yeah. um is being used part is about knowledge as well so mm-hmm. like i was saying before like a lot like really good at creating products but when it comes to the kind of other elements of of business and and that kind those kind of um different skills like it's it's not there because it's not something that that we've generally kind of been taught yeah. or kind of comes up too much so i think those are like two major parts but yeah just just understanding that like with with marketing spend and stuff like how how it might not come back exactly in the way in which which yeah. people think um and sometimes you do have to play the long game so it's not yeah. like okay you, you put in this and you're going to get out x straight away do you know what i mean especially where we do have or, or you do have, like you said, uh, people who like get business through through word of mouth, where there isn't any visible kind of acquisition cost in terms mm. of like spend or anything like that. It's like, okay, so what, why would I have to spend to to make money? Do you know what I mean? And like also like the consideration of okay, if if I spend here to to it to to increase my um my like say for example my newsletter or, or something like that, then um gonna maybe make a sale from this customer now and then also in three months time or something like that and yeah. just kind of like understanding like the bigger picture i suppose yeah um yeah yeah now you cover quite a lot of stuff because um it's it's one of those ones where like you say there's a long term and there's mm. a short term you can try and run a quick campaign and get a bit of short-term customers but Will they return? Whatever you just don't know. In it at the end of the day, so it's down to your market. It's down to your funnel. It's all it's all a funnel at the end of the day. If you treat it as a funnel, you've got to try and nurture that funnel, each element of that funnel, whether it's the top, it's the bottom, and if it's the bottom, they've purchased. How do you get them to come back again? So it's just understanding the full funnel and what to do within those elements. But it's also understanding how much does it cost to uh, to acquire a customer. They don't think about it like that. It's just okay. I'm putting this money into marketing. I want to be able to get sales. Yeah. So it, it, there's a lot of like using data and just measuring everything and, and and understanding whether it it makes sense or not. Like you don't. I mean, there's tools like Facebook and and, and what Instagram boosts and stuff like that. Depending on what your goal is, you've got to have a goal with marketing. Mm. Whether you want sales, you want to build a database. Like Nathaniel said, it could just be a case of from the build a database, then you're building leads of customers that potentially are interested. They ain't got to buy now, but you're putting money in to acquire them to see your product, whatever it is, you know what I mean? They might sign up because they might like it in the future. And if they've signed up, you want to give them touch points. Mm. So one thing I found that a lot of like small businesses lack was commu- communicating through email. Mm. So you've, you've got a list, you're collecting customers. I'm pretty sure you're collecting customers. You've got a list on, on your site or whatever communicate with them send them emails send them emails you'd be surprised like email is the most like i think they say it's the most safest like marketing channel like you will get sales like if you utilize it you build that audience they will purchase like even if if it's one purchase from a a newsletter that's a newsletter there's people constantly seeing like seeing you you know what i mean and seeing what you're doing seeing your brand message all of that stuff so that's one thing that I saw that that was lacked of people utilizing emails and and where we do that, and they can leverage us for the marketing. You know what I mean. So if if they don't do as much marketing on on, on their side, they leverage us for the marketing. They leverage us on on emails, whether it's um, through Facebook, Google, um, and then using like the affiliate network and being able to have other 
brands and websites drive traffic to the brands on Makuda. So yeah, yeah that's, that's one thing for, for us is that our businesses can leverage us for marketing. Yeah. If, if, if they're not confident in doing it themselves, they can always speak to us and whatever, and we can always provide tips, et cetera, but they can leverage us yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, what's interesting. So Nathaniel was saying to me offline about how, in terms of the vision of what you guys were starting with was to obviously get people to buy more, um, mm -hmm product from black creators mm -hmm. but you guys have had a bit of as you've been digging into data that's kind of pivoted a bit do you want to talk about that i don't i don't want to yeah yeah, you were yeah telling me so yeah it would be interesting no, to just talk touch yeah. on that for a little bit so like i like i, I was i was saying and initially when we when we first started it was very much more focused on getting consumers to engage with and buy from black owned businesses and making that as seamless uh, as possible by aggregating them together and then adding value. One thing that we learned was the, that's your, um, a really good book called Story Brand by Donald Miller. Did you ever read that? Yeah, I did, oh, yeah. Did? Okay. Audio book. <laughs> um, and, it, and it describes the, the internal frustration versus the, the uh, external problem. And, and we realized that the, the the, the kind of the economic landscape for black owned business is an external problem to a customer, mm -hmm. right? There are some customers who want to buy from them solely for that reason. But where we saw people like returning and, and really like engaging actively with the sellers on the platform was the ones who had the internal frustration of not being able to find products that represented them yeah. or their cultures or, or could really kind of resonate with them. And it was like, they, they were buying the products because of that. And then the the element about black owned businesses and kind of making impact there, it, it was nice for them. They enjoyed that element, but it wasn't necessarily the primary reason mm -hmm. why they were buying. And we do have people for sure yeah. that the primary reason why they buy is because it's a black yeah. owned business. But where we really kind of saw that the exciting element was the fact that you have like millions of black consumers primarily who struggle to find and are frustrated with not being able to find products that represent them or their yeah. cultures in mainstream retail. And, and this, like we know, I think the stat is like 40% of, of mm. um, black consumers struggle to find products wow. that either represent them or are tailored to their needs. Mm -hmm. um, so we're like, okay, there's, there's a massive opportunity here yeah. on, the, on the consumer side. And it was just really kind of doubling down on that for us. Mm okay wow it's, yeah it's, it's incredible what you can learn from being open to feedback and responding yeah. to feedback some for people sure. are scared for sure and i think to get that feedback but I, I think for 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 us it was about like doing so we we, we did it we learned and then we iterated around yeah. it and that that kind of listening and that feedback loop we mm. we still have and and always will have so and and it's just just being able to kind of engage with like customers and obviously sellers for in in our case in different ways. So whether that's customer interviews, whether that's surveys, like just just making sure that you're gathering data yeah. and information on them, because then you can build a much stronger picture about who your customer is and and how you engage with more of them effectively. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was wondering, do you see like Amazon, Etsy, eBay? Do you see them as competitors to yourself? I think. So so Amazon no. <laughs> eBay no, funnily yeah. enough. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you say funnily enough about eBay? Oh, it's because I, I I um I was speaking with or we were speaking with yeah. the CEO of eBay UK. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's really? Yeah. She, she's, <laughs> she's top dog at yeah. Okay, yeah. so yeah. she uh reached uh, out to you guys? well, so we we were we won an award yeah which we're gonna go about we'll talk about oh, okay cool talk yeah so i got that so, so cool so so, <laughs> so that at, at that yeah. event was um yeah. the, the ceo of ebay uk okay. and we had a good conversation and yeah. yeah so that's them but um interesting yeah <laughs> <laughs> interesting hey you keep your eyes on them <laughs> but yeah so do, do we do we consider i guess etsy kind of is they they yeah. they have they have like similarities in what they're doing. I guess mm. 
what we're doing is um, different in that we have a really unique focus supply chain. We're differentiating ourselves that way. I yeah. think with the larger uncurated marketplaces, which is what Etsy has become, obviously it's massively successful, undeniable, yeah. but they've they've obviously reached a point where they have to kind of cater to everyone. Yeah. Um, whereas that's not what we're doing. Okay. We're, we're very much focused on on a, on a very specific niche so okay. yeah okay that makes sense that makes sense keep on watching the ebay <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll see might see some news oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god yeah no it's um it's it's interesting that i mean it's interesting what you can achieve when you put your mind to it and you're also focused on what you're you're doing i'm sure you didn't think okay wow you're gonna be you know rubbing shoulders with somebody yeah, CEO mm -hmm. uh, uh, eBay UK so that, that's interesting right and I'm sure that you guys had a conversation about Makuda yeah, as well. yeah, yeah probably yeah. said what you're doing is oh, great oh that was the that was yeah. a central part that of the, the a, conversation yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. okay okay so <laughs> I mean I guess um you haven't had investment have you no 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 um, okay you haven't no. had investment is it something that you'd be looking into yeah so I think what 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 we what we wanted to do was very much work out what we needed to work out about okay. about the idea about just how, how how we wanted to build uh before we kind of went down that investment route because okay. and this was for, for for me it was about speaking to people that had already kind of been on that journey and and how it worked out for us for, for them sorry so yeah so not now we're at a point where we kind of understand a lot more a, yeah. about what we're doing and have yeah. a, a much firmer grasp on our vision so it's like okay now we we're ready yeah mm -hmm. you know what you guys have done really well you've kept your business model lean mm -hmm. which means that you're not spending crazy amounts mm -hmm. and it means you can survive for a longer time and you can so. obviously put your own money into it mm -hmm. i think when you do it that way and i think again for a lot of black businesses we don't get a lot of investment either mm -hmm. into it so if you're if you're spending so much at the beginning, you just will crash and burn on yeah. within a few years because you're not getting invest outside investments, you're yeah. not getting bank loans, you're having mm -hmm. to fork out your own personal income. But because you've kept your your business model lean and your cost low, it's not not the fact that you're surviving, but you're able to you don't have to rely on that investment. Mm -hmm. And then you yeah. can, when you're at a point where you're ready for it, mm -hmm. and then it's it's almost like you now have the leverage, right? Yeah. Like you can say, okay, actually, I'm not going to give you that much. We kind of don't really need it, but it would be good to, yeah. to grasp for. And that's exactly the position that, yeah. that, that I, I kind of wanted us to be in, as yeah. opposed to being not not like desperate, but like, mm. like super needy. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So, yeah. Let's talk about that, that award then. So you won the Digital Star Award, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So that's the, I think I believe that was best digital only business, right? So yeah. how did that come about? So Small Business Britain, uh, so it's, it's Small Business Britain, um, small awards. So it's a, a, a awards for like small businesses, like up yeah. and down the country. We've, so we were actually selected for Small Biz 100 last year, which is like wow. one of the hundreds most inspiring businesses in Britain. Um, and it, and it, was, it was kind of off the back of that that we kind of um, were put forward for the the Digital Star Award. And obviously one of the things about us is we, we were born online. We've only kind of ever been online, mm -hmm. obviously. How we've kind of managed and pushed for growth through um, our digital marketing and just like building in the digital space has been what kind of set us apart obviously we have a strong underlying mission in what we're doing as well but that yeah that was kind of what it was all about yeah amazing amazing how are you feeling about it yeah happy? i felt, it felt, it felt good it's it's, yeah. it's um it's good to it's good to be seen do you know what i mean yeah um we didn't expect to win there is a recording of of my <laughs> of my, my speech <laughs> you didn't prepare <laughs> which, it. which you can tell <laughs> yeah it was like do you know what's funny because I, I was i was thinking early on in the day yeah I was thinking, oh, maybe I should just like at least think about what what I'll say if I win, and I was like, nah, it'll be all right. Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. yeah. It was <laughs> I got called up. <laughs> it's funny because um, I, I, I don't think I told you because um, I was I I planned the social media, so I got the calendars and everything like that, mm. and I was gonna put something out 
on the Friday and I was like, I might just leave this space open. <laughs> I, like, I might just leave this space open. But then again, I was like, is what it is. Okay, we, I'll leave the space open, but we just don't have nothing go at yeah. this Friday. But I was, there was a little bit of hope in me yeah, <laughs> that, that we'll probably use the post to say we yeah. won, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, yeah. it happened. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, happy about it. And then, all, like, it's just being recognized for what we're doing, all our digital efforts as well. It just means we're being seen. Yeah. Like, Digital only means they're seeing us digitally, what we're doing. They've seen us in different like um, publications or different like places of, of, of for marketing online. So and, uh, what uh, we're doing is working. Uh, I think also it's like, like you said, it's like a win for the kind of Wakuda community as well. 100%. Because mm-hmm. like, like, like fact is like Wakuda is a platform, right? Yeah, so yeah. without users, without sellers, without buyers, it will be a real empty place. Yeah. Like, so, think, yeah. so it's, it's very much like a testament to, yeah. to the amazing sellers that we have on yeah, the platform. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you've gotten really good feedback. Trust pilot. Amazing. 4.4. Why do you think you've gotten that great feedback? It used to be 4.8. Yeah. It used to be 4.4. <laughs> I mean, 4.4 is amazing. <laughs> there was, there's a couple, couple yeah, recent yeah, things. Couple that, recent <laughs> things like, oh, not even bad things to be fair, like, but like, yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's, look, Constructive feedback yeah. it helps you grow. Mm. Better. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, have you seen Amazon's Trust Pilot? No, but yeah. I've seen I've seen, I've oh. seen some some big brands. Yeah. I think it's like in the twos. I think. Yeah, yeah definitely yeah. below three. So. so it's like the more successful you get, the lower yeah. the lower yeah. your score should be. Yeah. Problem, right? <laughs> they love you when you're small, yeah. but when you get big, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think I think how how we how we've managed that is our like our real like focus extreme focus on that customer experience yeah. yeah because like i said like when when people visit for the first time the the first experience of wakuda they might not even know about what the mission is yeah all that is sometimes even a marketplace a lot of the yeah. time um so it's just about making sure that we manage their expectation and their journey like their, yeah. their user journey from like end to end and make sure that it is the best and if it's not going right for whatever reason or maybe the seller needs support on something that we're there to kind of manage that and, and help them manage that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'll go back to humanizing. Mm. So we humanize it for the sellers, yeah. but we also humanize it for the customers as well. So it's very easy to, like, I guess like Amazon, you go, you buy quick, whatever, cool, done. The moment you have an issue, it's like, okay, who do I go to, who do I speak to, whatever, maybe no one's getting back to us or whatever. But with us, it's, we're very much there for the customers or mm. we want to create that experience where we want to make it seamless for them to shop. But the moment they question something, whatever, we're there, we respond, we speak to them. They're speaking to us. You know what yeah. I mean? It's not, it's not um, a remote person out in the Philippines or somewhere like that. They're speaking to us, you know what I mean? So um, they can speak to us through Instagram DMs or whatever, drop us an email. Sometimes it's to our personal emails. Somehow they, they found it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. and, and and we cater to them. We just make sure that the full experience is, is, is being dealt with. And I think that's led to some of the, the really good reviews. And then also, I think naturally as well, is the fact that the unique products that we have. Yeah. I think people are seeing stuff that they've, they've not seen before, like certain cards that they've been managed to, to get for either their, their kids or maybe their husbands or whoever. And it's like that create like, like they will say that created a massive smile on their face wow. like they laughed you know what i'm saying so you, you get to see that impact within their their review and, and 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 we're making them feel like the hero you know what i mean yeah of that purchase so yeah that's amazing that's amazing so everything's gone great three years now and uh, okay okay <laughs> and gonna, you, you now up and down. the face you do me <laughs> is why i'm asking this next question is coming right so i guess what what challenges in the three years um, that you've, you know, been building Wakuda. What challenges have you come across and what have you learned in that time? Do you want to start? Yeah. I don't know if we've got time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's we there's got a long time, list. Yeah. <laughs> we got time. It's a long list, but um, I'll take it right back to the start, you know. Like, when we was building it, just our first developer was just a mess. Okay. Like, his name is ingrained in us now. Like, every time we bring up his name in our, in our group chat, we just laugh because it's... It, he he built the site and there was like no care at all to our brief. Mm. He just built like, hey, I've done this, 
this is what you asked for. And it's like, no, we didn't ask for this. You know what I mean? It's like, here's what you asked for. My job's done. Bye. And it's like, whoa, we've got to find someone else now. But um, definitely, I would say from that, it was a case of just learning as uh, as we go along because we wanted to kind of automate things quickly at one point. Mm. Um, so we even hired um, like someone to do our social media. And even that was a bit of a mad one. <laughs> so we had such, I can't remember who, what was his name, but we had someone based out in the States, right? Managing the social media. And that was just wild. Sometimes it'd be like wild comments that they're giving us. It's like, it's a bit off because it's not how we, it wasn't our tone of voice as a brand. Mm. You know what I mean? And You're eventually. Responding rudely to people. I won't say rudely. It was just right, certain comments in other like other posts and okay and yeah. stuff like that it just wasn't our tone of voice and what we kind of envisioned mm. for the brand and and that kind of made me feel like you know what we are our best mm. voice for the brand like yeah. it's best coming from ourselves mm -hmm. so that's why we kind of just brought it in-house and just focused like that's one thing i think we just try to automate things a bit too quickly and then you learn and you change that quickly you know what i mean so um so hiring has always been a bit of a um, a tricky one, but um, oh. I think we're a good place with with hiring now with, yeah. with certain freelancers. We're a very good place now, actually. Yeah. To be fair, it was just those early days of the bit. Mm. <laughs> I'll, I'll take on that. I, I think it was more the kind of experience of doing it, right? So, mm. I've I've hired people for a lot of things, like within property mm -hmm. before. Within within this, like field, like for example, like. Like like going through the process of of hiring a developer for a certain job, whether it's a job or like ongoing, we're pretty good at that process yeah. now, and and like that kind of whole vetting procedure. Yeah. Whereas to start with, like in, in hindsight, it's twenty twenty vision, right? Yeah. But like looking back, there was like loads of red flags <laughs> about about the developer yeah. that we used the first time. Okay, right. um, and even the the content. Uh, creator or the, the instagram management mm. that, that we tried to kind of bring in house or oh, not bring in house sorry outsource looking back that that was the wrong way to to kind of go mm. about it so yeah there's been a lot of learning there i think as well like kind of kind of tied into it but like mm. like just general management like time management so where is time best best utilized yeah, yeah. based on where we're currently at as a business and a lot of the time that hasn't been so clear um mm -hmm. and then sometimes you just kind of need to step back look at it objectively and be like okay what's our like north star metric that we're kind of yeah. looking at like let's just focus everything on that mm -hmm. rather than trying to do this here which may impact that or move that needle a little bit but it's not really mm. going to make huge impact yeah okay wow mm. Mm. learn a lot yeah Three no years. yeah for sure and that's just the tip of the iceberg yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as you grow in scale look this is this this stuff is bound to happen there's always going to be problems but as entrepreneurs it's like how how do we overcome mm -hmm. what do we learn and do we make changes as we learn right mm -hmm. <laughs> Where where do you want to take Wakuda in the future? What's like the let's say next five years? Where are you trying to go with it? So we see we we see Wakuda as yeah we definitely we believe Wakuda has the potential to be the global um, marketplace which transforms the way how people discover and shop uh, products from African and Caribbean cultures, right? Um, so we're very much focused on dominating our category in the UK, but we know from both uh, sellers trying to join the platform from Europe and further out and people buying from all over the, the world, even though we've only focused on the UK, that there is opportunity there and, and okay. there is demand for, for the products that these creators are producing. So yeah, we we know there's global potential there. Yeah, where are you thinking? Do you know your next steps in terms of where you got to target next after the UK? I think, well, the the us is an interesting one i, I think i think the us is very interesting yeah mm. I, I think it's it's easy enough to say it but like it, it requires a different approach yeah, than, yeah. than we've it's taken obviously so far yeah um there there's there's some things that will resonate less with mm -hmm. with with a black american for example than with a black british person yeah 
so that there's a there's a lot a lot of steps to be yeah, taken yeah. to kind of get there. But yeah. in terms of in terms of like spending power of our, our specific target customer or target consumer, it's 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 very much like there's a massive opportunity there that yeah. that isn't being dealt with in the way in which which yeah. which we're kind of doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's incredible. It's been great speaking to you both. What would you have planned next? I guess Nathaniel, if you want to go. Yeah. Um actually both of you, yeah, yeah. What do you guys have planned next for yourselves? <laughs> I think it's continuing. Yeah. Um so v just very much like I said, just maintaining our focus. Mm. Um so we've got like amazing sellers on the platform and we've got an amazing wait list of sellers yeah. to join the platform so it's just continuing to to drive them demand work on uh, new campaigns and then also we want to take the opportunity to bring our online community into real life as well mm -hmm. because it's something that we obviously we started during lockdown yeah and all of that mess and yeah, I think there's an opportunity to bring our online community offline. And then also a lot of the sellers on our platform don't sell anywhere else. So okay, like, it's good. like like bringing that offline and yeah. kind of engaging with, with a more offline community as well. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's something that we're like excited about doing Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. in the short term. How about you got yeah. anything to add? I mean, pretty much said it all really. Yeah. Um, that's probably one of the few things I'm, I'm looking forward to, but literally just maintain the focus continue yeah. to grow just create different nice exciting campaigns like what we got what halfway through the month soon mm. well sorry, sorry for the year um and then so the, the next six months after that's gonna be quite interesting we'll mm -hmm. be trying to plan that and we've got black history month so there's a few stuff coming and there's obviously christmas is the big the big yeah. thing right so we want to be able to hit that that last quarter hard yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that's it. That's going to be an important one. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that's going to be very, very interesting. So where can people find you? So our website is uh, Wakuda. So www.wakuda.co.uk. That's Wakuda. W-A-K-U-D-A. <laughs> Cheers for that. I don't know what's happening. Like, this watch sometimes is out of control. Honestly, sorry if you want to go no, again. Um, so so w a k u d a uh, dot co dot uk. We're also on Instagram at wakuda underscore uk. That's where we're most active, and you can kind of see what we've got going on. Yeah. Um, yeah, or follow us on TikTok. Amazing, amazing. It's been, it's like I said, it's been, it's been such a great conversation and for me i think one of the key takeaways from me is the fact that you you're using your data data driven yeah. and you're learning from it and you're connected with on both the customer side on the supplier side i think it's quite important because as you were saying very key thing with with e-commerce businesses people just think okay i'm just gonna be the middleman people list their products yeah. and that's it go i'm just gonna make money off it i'm just gonna you know be sitting mm -hmm. behind and not interacting with anybody and i think like like you said, when when you take that kind of approach, like what what value are you actually put? okay, yes, mm -hmm. of course the platform is, is valuable, of course it is. But is there more you can be doing? Mm -hmm. And you've shown that there is more that you can do and that you can actually help these businesses to to grow because like you say, maybe they're lacking some something in terms of maybe marketing. Yeah. Maybe they don't know how to develop their business in a in, in a way as well. So yeah, it's very, very important. So I guess the question, final question I have for both of you is what was your final words for the audience? Uh -huh. I would say just check us out, find something there, whether you purchase or not, give us feedback. You know what I mean? Like we're always looking to take on feedback. It helps us grow, but I'm pretty sure you'll find something nice for a loved one a friend, something unique that you won't find on the high street and make them feel happy, become a hero. All right, my thing, my thing is, 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 is separate, right? I'll, I'll say if anyone out there is like thinking of doing something or, or trying something, whether it is entrepreneurial or just like a new thing, just get started in it. And don't worry about having to know too much about it because a lot of the time you can 
uh, what's it called? Get analysis par paralysis, right? Mm -hmm. Where you learn too much about something and then it's overwhelming. Yeah. So just go out and try something and then learn it along the way, basically, is what I'll say. Okay. Just do it. Just do it. Love that. Yeah. <laughs> just do it. Like Nike, right? Yeah. 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 No, I completely agree. I completely agree. Both of you. Um, no, it's been it's been an amazing conversation. Appreciate you both, you know, sharing your stories, sharing your journey. And yeah, I wish you luck as well. Yeah, Again, I, I would want to do um an episode in the in the future to see what you've learned in the mm -hmm, year yeah. and where the growth is taking you. Maybe another forty five percent growth. Maybe hundred percent, ladies. Listen, it's pretty nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right, I understand. But yeah, no, it's been it's been great uh, speaking to you. Watchers, listeners, I hope that you've enjoyed this episode of Takeover Experience. We'll see you next week's episode.